With the Equalizer 2 releasing in the UK today, I wanted to take some time to dissect its predecessor, a film I only watched a few weeks ago but have been relentlessly obsessing over since. Beyond the high octane action and elaborate kills, nothing stands out more, at least to me, than Robert McCall's penchant for reading. It's more than just a mere character trait. At first he explains his passion for reading as a favour to his deceased wife. I was working our way through the 100 books everybody should read. She made it in 97, so I figured I'd give it a shot. And most movies would probably settle at that point. He was a family man and carries his wife's memory through something she cared about deeply. We've seen that before. But upon close inspection, we realise that the books he reads throughout the movie are cavernous insights into the world of the character. I was taken aback by Robert's description of one of his books in particular. While talking to Terry, he's probed about what book he is currently reading. About it, he says, Oh, it's about a guy who thinks he's a knight in shining armor. The only thing is, is he lives in a world where knights don't exist anymore. And I found that fascinating. Even though we don't precisely know what book he's referencing in the film, many have theorised that it was a nod toward the classic Don Quixote. So I did some digging and while reading through the script, I found that Denzel's initial cue in the script was to hold the book up while talking about it, as you can see here on the screen. For those unaware of Don Quixote or its context, it centres around a man trying to enact chivalric duties when the world has far developed beyond that. While the novel plays quite comedic, with the titular character Alonso finding himself failing miserably at becoming a knight, Antoine Fuqua's The Equalizer totally subverts that. While Alonso fights a windmill, believing it to be a dragon, Robert McCall tears Russian gangsters to shreds for the entirety of the movie. Where both tales cross over is that they revolve around characters attempting to be heroic in a world that has become so corrupt that they are the outlier. Thinking back to Robert's quote, he says, It's about a guy who thinks he's a knight, only he lives in a world where knights don't exist anymore. If we line that up with the events of the movie, the quote pays off. Robert is the only character throughout the runtime that actively helps others in moments of innate desperation, whether that be aiding his overweight colleague to ace an upcoming fitness test, returning a ring to another colleague, or taking down an entire mob of chauvinistic murderers, Robert actively assumes the role of the knight. When we get an insight into how the police are operating in this morally deceitful world, that is when we truly realise that there are no knights remaining, much like the quote enforces. Robert encounters two police officers extorting and abusing a Hispanic lady in her business. They rob her of her money and grope her on a regular basis. When Robert approaches them, his anger reaches boiling point. It's about the only time in the movie where this calm knight loses it. His disappointment in the world and its reluctance to help those in dire need reinforce his status as a modern day knight. He's a bona fide superhero, delivering justice wherever possible. What separates him from a caped crusader though, is that there is never any collateral damage on his hands. He is precise in his actions and never puts any civilian at risk. If we look at the Code of Chivalry, written in the late 1100s and early 1200s, we see that almost every rule is one that the character of McCall abides by. It's a code referenced extensively in Don Quixote too. It would be ridiculous for me to read all of these out, but I'll leave a link in the description if any of you want to cross-reference the character of McCall with the code. I would though like to highlight just a few. McCall never attacks an unarmed foe. He waits to see if they have a weapon or for them to throw the first punch, as evidenced in this scene here. He avoids torture, actively leaving his enemies down once they have received the final blow. He protects and defends the weak and innocent, respects women and never abandons a friend or an ally. This is certainly true of when he realises Ralphie missed his fitness test due to the foul play at his mother's business. The entire crux of the movie, McCall fighting off Russian mobsters, is brought about due to his desire to protect Terry. Lastly, he's polite, attentive and respects life. It would be easy to have written McCall as this grouchy old man who goes about enacting vengeance because there's nothing left in his life. There are many movies that follow this formula. McCall though respects life, he respects how mundane it all is. The 9 to 5, the morning routine, reading in the same spot every day. We get that feeling from the supercut at the beginning of the movie that highlights the simplicity of it all. 
He's a bright spark in anyone's life though, from his co-workers to Terry. He aids them to varying degrees, whether it be giving tips on weight loss or taking out an entire mob for the sake of protecting one vulnerable person. This helps to prove the importance of the novels being read by the character. Antoine Fuqua and writer Richard Wenk didn't insert any old classic book into the story. They specifically added Don Quixote because it would inform the audience's reading of the character and raise him in our esteem. In cinema, we are inundated with these types of crime movies that constantly offer up a moral grey area and an anti-hero character that we're forced to love. It can get boring, especially since the formula very rarely shifts. What's fresh is something like The Equalizer, where an inherently good character is dropped in a murky world of prostitution, corruption and extortion and is forced to fight his way through it all as the last remaining modern day knight. Amidst the goofy dialogue and the wacky action scenes, it's important to remember what the Equalizer is trying to achieve. It's easy to gloss over it as just another action movie, but this one isn't disposable like most others. It has a story to tell, informed through classic tales of the past, but subverted and adjusted to be viewed through a modern day prism. It's a tale that inspires hope in humanity and acts to make us better people.